This is the FCB 250 CM aluminum storage crate. We're going to show you how to uh, take off the lid, the gutters, and remove some parts. So let's begin. Quick overview of the components, the attached components to the bag. First to we'll start here we have our container liner for our crate. We have a 27 inch buoy. Has a certified buoy sling and a 3-8 stainless steel quick link. We have a 6 inch hand pump to inflate the bladder in the air chambers. Navigational beacon. We have a 25 foot suction hose to attach to the stern end. This comes with a four inch ball valve and dust cap. Okay, we have a 20 foot by two inch decant hose. And this is merely to separate the water from the oil. On one end, we have a light aluminum part. On the end that goes inside the sea slug is a weighted brass end. That'll sink to the bottom of the bag. We have a male, male, four inch ball valve for one of the fillers. We have a four inch male only ball valve to act as a vent. We have a 90 degree elbow with swivel. These parts are all stay locked for security. This comes with three one and a half inch pin shackles. These are for mooring purposes in the belly bands, and this will come into play in raising the crate. This is a patch kit that comes with it. We have a strap wrench, knife, and roller. Some materials for repair, body material, float material. A PVC vinyl cement with MSDS and instructions. And we have our manual for operating the sea slug. In this other kit, we have 16 bungees, 10 inch bungees that are going to fasten our container liner to the crate. We have a series of lift straps for our crate. There are four one inch pin shackles as well that's going to go with our crate. We have five, six zip ties for securing cam locks. There are four 31 inch bungee cords that come with this to secure our, our beacon there to the slug. Top of a two inch union to secure the liner to the drain.
We have two three quarter inch wrenches for removing the pins on the door of the crate. We have a spare pin in case there is a damaged pin during that process. Just a raw bar to help remove the pins from the door. And of course a hammer to aid in that process. This is an air manifold for the float tubes. This is mainly going to be used during the inspection of the bag and not actually the operation of the bag. There is a drogue chute or sea anchor with a float and that'll be attached to the stern end of the sea slug and that is a quick overview of our loose components. Okay now we have the parts removed from the crate we'll start removing the door and preparing the bag to be removed from the crate. The door is fastened with these three bolts throughout the base. We'll remove these We'll undo the latches and we'll remove the door. Okay, the tools we'll use to remove these are just two three quarter inch open end wrenches, a hammer, and a pin to help push this pin out of the slots. Now that the pins are out of the box, the weight of the lid is secured with these four latches and just at the base. Before we remove the bag, there is a few different methods we can use to remove this bag. It's quite heavy, so if you have a large forklift, you could just take the bag up and over the door. If you have a crane, take it up over the door as well. A smaller forklift is all that needs to be used. We'll have to remove the door and take the bag out in that fashion. So now to begin removing the door, we need to use our forklift and raise the bag a little bit. Reason being, the bag is pushing up against the store. So in order for a couple of personnel to remove the door, we're gonna lighten the load off the inside of the crate by raising the bag. My colleague's in the box right now. He's gonna tie a sling around the main pick point of the bag a one and a half inch shackle. We'll attach that to the fork and we'll begin to raise the bag up. So we have the bag raised. The tension should be off of the off the uh, door here. We now have our 200 cm sea slug out of the box, uh, positioned on the floor. Now we're going to take it out of its cargo net and start unfolding it.
What Nate's doing right now is he's attaching both tow lines to the carriage of the forklift and then I'm going to raise both ends. Now my colleague is untying the lower nose cone, so we're just going to take the top and lay it over. Now we have our bag laid out. We're going to start on unwrapping it. It's, uh, the ground sheet is tied off with some quarter inch line. Nate here is gonna untie that, as well as our tow line is no longer attached. Mark's going to bring our tow line down, reattach it to the shackle, and we'll open this bag up. He's going to make sure there's no twists in the harness as he does this. Toe lines are pulled out of the way. Now we're going to use roughly about five men to uh, lay this bag flat. Now our bladder is laid out flat. We're going to remove all the protective coverings on the connections and then start attaching our components. Right now we're at the toe end of the sea slug. 
The first thing we're going to want to do is um, put air in all of the inflatable components. Uh, we'll start at the toe here. There is an in internal bladder on this end for buoyancy. Um, as you can see, our one inch toe line is certified. It leads to a one and a quarter inch pin shackle. And then there's six toe harness, which are as well all certified. Inside this six inch NPT, there's a two inch filler, other words called a Munson valve. Just unscrew the cap. As you get that open, you'll notice there's a check valve inside. The check valve is opened, spinning in and clockwise, and it's closed by pushing in and counterclockwise. You're going to want this in the closed position before filling. We have our six inch hand pump. And with our valve closed, we'll insert our adapter and start inflating. Okay, so after the inflation's complete, inside the bladder here, there's a three and a quarter PSI relief valve. This will keep the uh, bladder from receiving too much pressure and, and popping. Once you hear the relief valve, then you're going to unscrew the hand pump from the two inch valve, making sure that the check valve is closed still. And then we'll put the cap back on to secure that. and then cover it up with our six inch PVC cap. Now our toe end is prepped and ready to go. Once we have our nose cone air bladder inflated, we're going to move on to the floats. Each float consists of six individual inflation tubes. As the nose cone air bladder had, it has a check valve on each of these six. Clockwise, push down and clockwise opens, push down, counterclockwise closes the check valves. The other end has no check valves, they're just open. So the first thing we need to do is go to the other end and secure all those caps. Now we're at the stern end of the floats. And as I mentioned before, on the stern end, <coughs> there's no check valve in this end, it's just open. So we need to make sure these caps are nice and secure so the air doesn't leak out. Okay, so that's our six chambers. We do have another additional valve here. This isn't attached to any type of inflation. This is uh, merely to when we pack the bag air doesn't get trapped within this outside pocket. So this is just a bleeder valve. I'm going to go ahead and close that up too. As you can see, we have a zipper on both sides on the stern end here. This really has no function as far as inflation or anything like that. This is just to access the tubes inside in case there is future repairs or anything like that. Now we're ready to inflate. We now have the cap secured on the stern end of the floats. So we came back up here to the toe end of the floats where the check valves are and we'll begin filling. Just like the other valves, we want to make sure that all check valves are in the closed position. And once again, to close, it's to push in and counterclockwise. That's closed. We insert our pump adapter and we begin inflating. The recommended pressure for each tube is 5 psi. However, there's no gauge on this pump. Your body weight will achieve the 5 psi. Okay, now we have our air chambers all inflated. As I mentioned before, there's no gauge on this, so we're just going by feel. Just so it's a little firm, not overinflated, not hard and definitely not soggy. Now there is a second, <coughs> second way we can inflate, and that's through the air manifold that we supply. As you can see, 
It has six different ports to match with the six different hoses. It has an air gauge here and it has a half inch ball valve for inflation here. Now we recommend that this is used for testing. As you can see, it's a max five PSI. On an open end, the stern end that has no check valve, you'll be able to get an accurate reading. If you use this as an inflation tool, there's check valves on this side. Therefore, the reading is not gonna be correct. This is why, we, once again, we have to go by feel when inflating. We're just looking for firmness, not overinflated, not hard, and not soggy. So to show you how to hook this up, once again, all the valves are closed. Okay, now that we have this hooked up, your compressed air would just go onto your IM fitting. Ball valve opens, and you fill. With the check valves closed, just looking for firmness. Don't overinflate. Five PSI is a recommended use. Once we have our air components filled, we're gonna work our way down the bag. Our first stop, we have two mooring triangles. As you can see, we have a man line attached to one. These can be used to moor the bag next to a ship uh, or tied to a dock or even for lifting of the bag. Our next stop here is a four inch NPT filler. It's a threaded connection. And this is gonna be one of our main fillers here. We have a four inch swivel, also threaded, coming out to a female cam lock with stay lock. So we'll screw this on. Stay locks are fastened. We'll grab our ball valve to attach. It's a four inch ball valve, male, male. Attached like so. So our next stop is a nav light mount. This is welded onto the bag. We have two of these, one towards the toe end and one towards the stern end. In this case, we're not going to attach the beacon on this side. Reason being is we have our main filler here. This is gonna be attached to a skimmer. If there's any movement, there's a hose, we don't want to make contact with our navigation light. So we're just going to cap this back up and we'll proceed to the next one. Our next stop here, we have belly bands is what we refer to them as. These are all certified and they'll be attached with a one and a half inch pin shackle. So our next stop is another four inch NPT. And what this particular one is going to be used for is for venting. Another four inch ball valve. This one, open thread, male only on top. When filling the bag, we wanna keep this vent open. This will help achieve maximum capacity in the sea slug. You don't want air to build up inside the bag taking up capacity. So this is to stay open. Once the bag is full and it's in transit, this is to be closed in order for no fluid to escape from the bag. Okay, next down the line, we have two more mooring triangles. As you can see, our man line passes through it just to keep it snug. Once again, uh, for mooring, the mooring rings are only for if the bag is empty, if you're raising. Next to the mooring rings, we have a center hatch. This will take a submersible pump. We supply the adapter plates to configure to any type of pump that the client wants to use. 
<clears throat> and then we could put our submersible pump right into the hatch. Now if we were in the field, we would actually attach the plate, but this will give you a visual understanding. The adapter plate can be hooked in any configuration. The hydraulic hoses can be in any configuration. Whatever pump the client chooses, we can adapt to. And that's essentially our center hatch. Our next stop is another set of double triangles. Same purpose as the rest. They're for mooring or lifting an empty bag only. Then we have another four inch NPT filler and we're gonna keep this closed for the time. Okay, just to the stern end of the four inch connection, we have another five inch belly band. Once again, this is certified and it's held together with a one and a half inch pin shackle. And again, these belly bands are used for lifting or mooring. Once again, you want to only lift the bag when it's empty. Our next stop is the second navigational light mount. It's threaded as well. Surrounding, there's four anchor points for the nav light. And that fastens like so. The navigational beacon is powered by three D cell batteries. The batteries aren't included. This is a photo cell, so it only operates at night. Our next connection is a three inch NPT. This is a decant connection. Let's get it threaded. This is our decant hose. We have a weighted brass end. This is what's going to go down into the bag. We're not going to hook it up right now, um, but I'll, we'll explain the parts. We have an aluminum connection on the top. With this running into the bag, it will be secured onto the connection with a three inch male cam lock. As seen here, that'll fasten into the three inch female cam lock. This will secure it to the bag. This decant will be hooked up through the offloading process and not before then. And finally, our last set of double triangles. It's attached here with a 5 8 quick link. This is the man line. Once again, these are only for lifting if the bag is empty. Okay, now we're at the stern end of the FCB 200 CM. This is where we're gonna attach our suction hose, our four inch. We're also gonna have a drogue chute and a 27 inch buoy attached to this point. Once the hose is secured to the stern end, we're going to attach the ball valve to the first set of mooring rings.
Once we have our stern hose attached, then we'll attach our 27 inch buoy and drogue line. Now we have those attached. We also have six tow harness on this side, on the stern end, which are all also certified. They're meeting to a one and a quarter inch pin shackle, and those are attached to a one inch tow line, which is also certified. Now this four inch suction hose is primarily just to get the last few remaining gallons that are in the bag after the pump has discharged the fluid. Each end has a 9,000 kilogram safety working load. This is important. After draining the bag through the submersible pump, there's going to be a small amount of fluid left. This end usually gets raised, and it'll help drain the fluid out of the 4-inch suction hose on the stern end. An inspection should be done at least once a year, <clears throat> if not after every use. The inspection process will begin with bringing the sea slug up to 2 PSI. At that point, all half inch bolts will be torqued at 80 foot pounds. All three quarter inch bolts will be torqued at 120 foot pounds. At this point, we'll bring our slug up to 2.5 PSI and begin inspecting the welds along with soap and water and a thorough visual inspection.
We now are going to prepare the bladder for packing, but first we'll empty the air chambers in the floats and empty the nose cone air bladder. So I push in on the check valve and spin clockwise. Now that the nose cone air bladder has been bled of its air, we're going to go to the stern end of the floats and open those up as well. After releasing the air out of the tubes, leave the caps off in order to allow excess air to bleed out and then we'll be trapped in there. Once the air is drained out of the floats and the nose cone air bladder, we'll cover all parts, all connections, and start folding the bag. Okay, when packing the bag, we always want to drop these wing nuts. It's just too much of an abrasive point for when we fold the bag onto itself. So these all must be dropped down. As well as making sure that these small armatures are faced across the middle of the slug, not running longwise. and then we could cover it with our hatch cover. Now that we have <coughs> the air chambers drained, the nose cone air bladder drained, all connections covered, we're gonna start folding the bag. There's seven handles on each side of the bag. Each have a 225 kilogram rating. These handles are only used for the folding of the bag, not for towing, not for mooring, only for folding. Okay, now for the folding process, we're going to start at the toe end and fold it towards the stern end. We're going to match up the nose cones. Now 
we're going to hook up the stern end as well as the toe end and fold the bag in half once again. Once you're tying off the ends, it's very important to keep your shackles at an even length. Okay, now we have our sea slug folded and ready for being put in the cargo net. The cargo net has a series of squares in it. Uh, the way to position it is if you have one row of squares on each side of the net. If you position your bag in the middle of those two rows, then it'll be perfectly centered. That's where we want it. I'm also going to use these cardboard cores in order to prop up each side of this bag, when I pick it up with my forklift, I don't leave any abrasions. This is going to give me just enough clearance to do that. Now with the bag centered into the net, we're now just going to, on all the soft eyes, we're going to put on the one and a half inch pin shackle. If perchance it comes up too tight because of the fold or whatnot, where all the straps won't go onto the shackle, as you can see, there's no use struggling for it. We'll just pick this bag up, let it settle, and then there'll be plenty of room to attach these onto the one and a half inch shackle. Now that we have our sea slug into the net, we'll prepare the we've prepared the crate, we've had the lid off, we have the door removed, and now we'll place it inside. Okay, now our, that our slug is in the box, we're going to go through our parts, do a complete inventory of all our parts, one by one as we put them into the box. This will ensure that everything is there in case of oil spill, practice, um, routine training. So we'll do a quick inventory. Okay, 27 inch buoy. 
with certified strap and quick link. Two HD can. Four inch swivel, four inch elbow. Check. Four inch male, male. Four inch male only. Check, check. Three, one and a half inch shackle. Plus one. Drogue shoot, float, swivel. Six inch hand pump. Check. Liner. Okay, fender, rope, stay locked. Can you put it on the on the position? Yeah. Okay. Coming in. Okay, got it. Toolbox. Okay, all our patches. Knife Check. roller strap wrench. Glue with MSDS. Manual. All right. Four thirty ones. Okay. Union. Union. Okay. Six. Uh, okay. Twenty-four inch tie downs. Sixteen. 10 inches. Okay, only four inch, four ones. Okay. Three quarter inch, two three quarter inch wrenches. Check. Hammer. Check. Spare bolt. Check. And a tapping rod. The air manifold and the navigational beacon will go in last because it's probably the least durable of all the equipment. Uh, there's glass, plastic, so we'll just put that in last just to protect it. That is all of our parts. Now we'll put the lid on and finish packing. So we've covered unpacking, we've covered the inspection process, the unattached components, the repacking, and the final inspection of 
unattached components. This will conclude the instructional video of the FCB C-Slug.